church and we welcome you to our worship service and I'm glad to see each and every one today and I hope that you are ready and excited to praise our God this morning and so may I invite everyone to please stand and greet the person nearest you or behind you and show your appreciation for seeing them this morning. Truly it's a delight to be in the presence of our Lord. And allow me to read to you a few verses from Psalm 98. It says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have worked salvation for Him. The Lord has made known His salvation. He has revealed His righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and say praises. And with this exhortation, let us learn this new song together as we declare the reasons why the Lord deserves to be praised and worshipped. So let's clap our hands together as we sing this song. For your endless love, for your endless love, for the life you gave, for the life you gave, for the second chance, for the second chance, for your priceless grace, for your priceless grace, for your healing hand, for your Gift of peace for the gift of peace for the blessed hope for the blessed hope for the faith to believe for the faith to believe for these reasons I praise you for these
to sing praises to our God whose name is above every other name whose name deserves all glory and praises let's join our hands together and say for our Lord praise the name above all names the one who reigns forever still the same
stronger. No other name forever. I will praise her name. No other name that can heal us. No other name that can free us. No other name so precious. deserves all glory and all honor and all praises. And today, as we come before the presence of our Lord, with understanding that because of who He is and for what He has done and for what He has given us, our lives are to be lived for Him and to accomplish His cause. We were made every breath to be brief to do his will and for every word that will come out of our mouths will be stories for how he loves us so much that this will be words that will tell of his great salvation Oh, 
believers of the Lord we have given He has given us the great commission and that is to tell the story to every nation to disciple them and teach them of the gospel that He has left us and as we sing this hymn may we reflect on the lyrics of this song that as we anticipate is coming, we are to tell of his story to every nation. Oh, 
chapter 7, verse 9 to 12 says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Father, again, we just thank you for this privilege that you have given us to gather here as a family. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege to, to lift up your name and your name alone. Father, I pray that as we continue in our worship this morning, I pray that we would embrace the truth that everything that's happened in the past, that everything that's happening now, and everything that will happen is moving towards this glorious day when people from every tongue, every tribe, every land will bow before you, will worship you for who you are. Father, as we look at the world around us, we see brokenness all around. We see brokenness even amongst our own very selves. And so, Lord, it's in the midst of this that we plead before you that you would preserve your church, that you would preserve our families, that you would preserve our hearts. Father, I pray that you would remind us this morning that indeed the day is drawing near, the day where we will see you face to face, the day where pain will be no more, suffering will be no more. And so God, we plead before you that you would preserve our hearts, that we would truly live for the sake of the gospel that is proclaimed among the nations. Father, we pray for Pastor Don as he delivers your message. Thank you, Lord, for the strength that you have given him during the first service. And we pray the same for this service, Lord, that you would empower him, speak through him. We pray, O oh God, that you would ready our hearts. Take away any distractions that we may have, that we may truly hear from you. Our desire is that the name of Jesus be lifted, be exalted, be magnified in our midst. We thank you once again, Father, for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And from one country to another, recently I've been, I've had a vacation in the beautiful country, the beautiful island of Taiwan. Um, I did not go there primarily as a foodie, nor did I go there primarily as an adventurer, but as one who had been burdened by God to pray for this beautiful country. You see, I went there as I went there to pray um, for the people groups of Taiwan. My first encounter with, with this country was during my elementary school days <clears throat> when I made a class report um, about Taiwan and Dr. Sun Yat-sen, one of its founding members. And in 2009, when I attended a global day of prayer event wherein we were made to select one flag from among a hundred, I think, or more, and we were challenged to pray for one year for the country that that flag represented. Now, one flag stood out for me. And I later discovered that it was the flag of Taiwan. So for one year, I prayed for Taiwan. And I had this burden <clears throat> um, and prayer to the Lord that if he would grant me that opportunity to visit that country, I would like to pray on its very ground. So when the, when the Lord opened that door of opportunity, I remembered, I was reminded of my commitment, of my prayer, and I did pray uh, during those times when I would go to the countryside, especially when I went up to Taipei 101. If you are familiar with that building, I will show you a picture of that in a while. So I do not have videos. I only have a few pictures uh, of the buildings that I, that I took from there, and let me share these with you. If you've been to Taiwan, you will know this to be Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Hall. It is situated in its own complex 
It also hosts or houses the National uh, Theater and the National Concert Hall. This is one of the many monuments that is truly uh, magnificent. It, it is so enormous in size that it houses several exhibition centers. Um, the statue of Chiang Kai-shek himself, uh, several souvenir shops, I think, cafes, restaurants. So this is a very, very big building. Another one is the National Palace Museum, uh, which boasts of many exhi exhibition halls as well. It took me, I think, four or five hours to tour all the exhibits. That's why when I finally took a picture of the edifice, it was already nighttime. And this, of course, is Taipei 101. It used to be the tallest building in the world, but it had been surpassed a few years um, or a few months after its construction. But this was built with making it air earthquake proof in mind. You see, Taiwan sits in the Belt of Fire region, so it experiences many earthquakes. I think much more than the Philippines, or similar to, to, to Japan. So when they built this, it was made earthquake proof. Now, I, I, I am reminded of a structure, a magnificent structure in ancient times at the time of Jesus, and it was the Temple of Jerusalem. Jesus predicted using his very words, truly I say to you, there will not be left here one, sto one stone upon another that will not be thrown down, referring to the temple. Or in the New, Test New International Version, truly I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And when will this happen? And it happened um, during the siege of Israel during the Roman times. I'm also reminded of the many things that will happen at the end of the age because there will be a great shaking in the heavens and in the earth. Many things will happen during that time, but if there is something that we have to know about during the last days, it would be these two. Jesus is coming soon, and we must be prepared for his coming. Again, Jesus will be coming soon and we must be prepared for his coming. This is the passage that we will be studying from this morning. And it was when the disciples pointed out the temple and the many buildings in the temple complex to Jesus. Please join me in reading together our passage for today. Let us read this. With, two, with those two things in mind, so that we may be reminded of the things that will and must happen and how we are to live our lives to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. Would you please rise and join me in reading God's word together. This is in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 14, and we will skip later on to verses 42 onwards. So please re read with me. Jesus left the temple and was going away. When his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple, but he answered them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, See that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. 
and he will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. Let's skip to verse 42. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not accept, expect. Let us pray. Father, we ask for the ministry of your Spirit upon us, so that as we are reminded of what, what things are to happen and must happen in the last days, we would take this into heart so that we would be diligent in living out the life that you have entrusted to us. We pray, Lord, that you would find us faithful and wise in living for you as you had entrusted to us the Great Commission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may, you may take your seats. Again, there are many things that will happen at the end of the age. But there is something that we have to know in the last days. The first is that Jesus is coming soon. And we must be prepared for his coming. Now, some of you may be thinking or even asking, is, is it really the last days that we are in right now? Maybe... We are not aware of the things that are happening around the globe. That's why we are thinking this. So let's review what the signs of the age are so that we may be forewarned if indeed we are in the last days. If I, as I enumerate the things again as we review them, can I request you one thing? When I, say, when I ask you, check, could you please answer me, check, okay? Let's try that. I ask, check, you answer. Again, I ask, check, you answer. Okay. So let's see sign number one. The signs of the end of the age. Many will come in my name and will lead many astray. At no other time in history has there been a greater number of religions and religious organizations. Two years ago, a young Filipina and a Korean guy came by my house. They were going from one house to another inside our village to share their faith. At first, I thought they were Christians because they were carrying Bibles. But until they insisted that the third person of the Trinity is God the Mother, Again, God the Mother, not the Holy Spirit. Then I knew that they were from a cult. They would cite verses using the same Bible that we have. And last I heard about them, they are growing rapidly in number. And most of their converts were women. And just last week, when I was having a vacation, my prayer time, prayer walk in Taiwan, I heard from a friend whom I saw there that there exists in Metro Manila several churches who claim that they are Christian and yet they perform same-sex marriage. And do you know that people can establish their own religion by registering them officially and start a church? It's true. I, I researched this on this and I, saw, I found out that in Sweden, the newest religion in the world was founded there. And its name is Kopimism. Kopimism. A 19-year-old founder and his congregation, the congregation of the Missionary Church of Kopimism, 
believe that copying information is holy. So they registered their organization as a religion and started a church. So, let's check if this sign is happening now. Many will come in my name in, and will lead many astray. Check. Check. Sign number two. Wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. As of October this year, 2019, according to the website Wars in the World, there is such a website, there are 30 countries in Africa that have ongoing wars and nine autonomous regions or provinces that are struggling for independence. In Asia, there are 16 countries with wars, and that includes the Philippines, and has 21 regions or provinces struggling for autonomy. In Europe, there are 10 and 12, respectively. In the Middle East, there are 7 and 2. And in the Americas, there are 7 countries with wars. This brings a total of 69 countries involved in wars and 46 autonomous regions or provinces that are struggling for independence. Check batayo sa number two. Check. How about number three? Famines and earthquakes in various places. Now, here in the Philippines, we have experienced El Nido and La Nina over the past decades, cycles of those. Climate conditions have severely changed that we are seeing record highs in regional and global temperatures. And when there is little or, or no precipitation or rain, droughts occur. Just this summer, hundreds of villages in India had to be evacuated because their wells, their enormous, enormous wells, went dry. There was no water to drink, no water to water their plants, and therefore they had no crops, nothing to eat. In this picture, a poor shepherd was burying his dead sheep. All that he had to live for, dead. Because of the drought that went on for months, even after this picture was taken. Now in the Philippines, we, we may not be experiencing drought or famine, or at least not yet, um, in such magnitude, such as in India, but we've had our share of earthquakes. As a matter of fact, for the past several years, we had been waiting for the big one. We've been having many drills in schools, in offices, because of the anticipation of this major earthquake. So when it comes to famines and earthquakes in various places, check. Number four, another sign. They will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, we have listened to Teacher Carol's testimony that persecution, oppression is being experienced in, in, Nepal, in Nepal. There is even a law, that, uh, a bill that makes it illegal to share someone's faith. It is no longer just in Islamic countries that Christian churches and missionaries are facing persecution, oppression, and incarceration. More and more, even Buddhist and Hindu bloc nations or countries are also closing their doors to citizens from known Christian countries, making it difficult for entry. There is a widespread movement in these countries that they should remain Hindu and Buddhist, respectively, making it illegal and therefore punishable for a person of another religion to share his faith. And of course, we have heard stories upon stories of Christian churches being burned down, missionaries having to flee from their mission field for safety, and people being martyred for their faith. Number four, check. Mas humihina na. Mas lumulungkot. Kasi mas tumitindi yung mga pangyayari. 
And this will escalate even more during the last days. Number five, many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another in the church. It is a known fact that there had been a steady decline in Christianity in Europe and America across the centuries, especially in the 20th century. We hear of church splits left and right. Children of pastors and missionaries are rejecting the faith of their parents. There is even strife and animosity among denominations, Christian denominations, between churches of the same denomination, within churches, and within Christian families, sad to say. Discouragements, disappointments, disillusionments, these are the mighty and effective tools that the devil employs to inflict upon all humanity. And the church, yes, the church is not exempted. And this brings us to the sixth. The love of many will grow cold. Because of these discouragements, the love of many will grow cold. Because of the increase of lawlessness or wickedness in the last days, many in the church, in the church, will fall away. Now, some of you may ask, Pastor, parang impossible naman yata. Will not God protect His people? Yes, God will protect His people. But you see, not everyone in the church is Christian. Not all who go to church, not all who attend or even lead Bible studies, not all who profess to be Christian, not all who serve in the church, and unfortunately, unfortunately not even all pastors are true Christians. I pray that none is here in GCF South Metro right now. You see, in Matthew 7, 21, Jesus said, until verse 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many people, yes, many people will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, this is Jesus speaking. He said, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, when we see that phrase, I never knew you, whether spoken by Jesus or anywhere else in Scripture, we know that to be in terms of intimacy, of having a personal relationship, a dynamic one, an intimate one with God. So for Jesus to say, I never knew you, these are people who think they are Christian in their sight, because of the things that they do for God, Jesus himself would say, I never knew you. We never had a relationship. We were never intimate. So depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. It is clear here from this passage that it is not by service or giftedness that followers of Christ are identified. It is not service that saves us or guarantees our salvation. It is not even in doing things in, G in the name of Jesus. It is by having an intimate personal relationship with Jesus alone. Knowing Jesus, not only intellectually, but experientially, relationally. And the lawlessness will increase in those days. But in spite of that, in the days before Jesus returns, true believers, 
true believers will persevere. They will persevere to, to the end, no matter how difficult their circumstances may be. And only because God gives them the grace and the empowerment to persevere. It is God who gives that grace to persevere. And He does this for His glory. And out of their love for God, for all that He has done for them, the true believers will continue to put their hope and trust in Christ. And I pray that that is true and will continue to be true in GCF South Metro. As I said, we have checked all one to seven. We are in the last days and we will experience these. May we persevere until the end. May we persevere in our walk with Jesus. May we persevere in sharing our faith, the good news of salvation. May we persevere in living out our salvation as a testimony to all the world. Whether we are planted here in this community or the Lord sends us elsewhere soon or in the future, may we persevere. Which is why we are sure that the seventh sign will happen. And it is this. And the gospel will be proclaimed throughout the whole world. Only because God will cause the true believers, the true church, to persevere. And they will persevere no matter how difficult the challenges in their lives will be. No matter the persecution, opposition, oppression, threats to their lives, they will continue to proclaim the gospel throughout the world. Despite experiencing social upheavals and natural calamities, being betrayed and hated and even put to death, the true followers of Christ will remain true to the great commission of Jesus. They will proclaim with joy and boldness, the greatness, the goodness, the great love, the great mercies, the manifold graces of their great God and King, Jesus Christ. And when the gospel has been proclaimed, then the end of the age will come. Not yet the end of the world, just the end of the age, the end of the birth pains, which signal the, the sign of the return of Jesus Christ. For in verses 21 onwards, Jesus speaks of the great tribulation after his coming, affirming once more through these verses that, so also in Matthew 24, so also when you see all these things, you know that he is near. At the very gates, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Jesus, my friends, is coming soon. That's why we know we are in the last days. For those who are already in Jesus, this should give us great encouragement. Despite the many things that will be happening, terrible things. But for those who are not certain of their salvation, Jesus' message is this. Confess your sins and acknowledge your need of God's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Acknowledge that it is not by being good or by through good works that we are saved. It is by believing that Jesus' sacrifice and death on the cross alone can we be saved. And repent, turn away from sin, and let Jesus be the Lord of your life. If you do that with all your heart, you, if you put your faith in Jesus, then today can be the day, will be the day of your salvation. Now concerning the day and hour of his coming, Jesus says in verse 36 that no one knows except the Father. 
But what Jesus tells us in verses 37 to 44 is that more importantly, more importantly, we should be prepared for His coming. In verse 36, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So the first thing for us to, to know about the last days, Jesus is coming. Not only that, Jesus is coming soon. And the second thing, therefore, is that we must be prepared for His coming. We must be prepared for His coming. Now, chapters 24 to 45, 45 verse 45 rather, up to the end of the, chap, of the 25th chapter, it paints for us a picture of who the true believers of Jesus are and who are not. And because these passages are very familiar to us, we will not read them in its entirety anymore. Instead, we will just get the gist and the principles behind these, also for the interest of time. So from verse 45, Matthew 24, Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household? to give them their food at the proper time. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that wicked servant says to himself, my master delay is delayed and begins to beat his fellow servants and eats and drinks with drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, at an hour he does not know, and will cut, cut him in pieces and put him with the hypocrites. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now the faithful and wise servant here represents true believers, for they will continue to do the Lord's will until he comes again. And the wicked or the lawless servant who beats his fellow servants and eats and drinks with the drunkards represents unbelievers. He has no fear of the Lord's return. And with him, his judgment of sin. He willfully chooses, willfully chooses to go on living a sinful life. Having no love, no compassion or regard for others, he indulges himself in the pleasures of this world. From here, we find that the true believer is faithful and true. The parable of the ten virgins and the parable of the talents in chapter 25 further highlight these qualities. But again, we will not read those, skip, those passages anymore. The first parable, the parable of the ten virgins, it stresses the importance of being ready for the, for the return of Christ at any time. Through this parable, Jesus exhorts all believers to be wise by keeping watch as he concluded this with the words, Watch therefore, in verse 13a. And in NIV it says, Keep watch therefore. Because when he, Jesus, the bridegroom, returns for us, his bride, the church. He expects us to be solely devoted to him, not looking for anyone else. He expects us to be prepared or preparing ourselves for his coming. And there will be no second chances. Just like how the five foolish virgins were not let into the marriage banquet, because they were not prepared for the unexpected arrival of the bridegroom. Consequently, they missed out on the night wedding, where oil was needed to light their lamps for the marriage procession. The parable of the talents is about faithful stewardship in everything that the Lord has entrusted to us. This does not only refer to finances. 
but it extends even to the many opportunities that the Lord gives to us. Again, those who are faithful are the true believers, whereas those who are not faithful prove themselves to be wicked. And they truly do not know the Master because they've never had this intimate, personal, dynamic relationship with Him. So for us who are living in the last days, if we are true followers of Jesus, we have to be wise. We have to be faithful in how we live. But what are we to be wise and faithful in, you may ask? And how is it to be wise and faithful? Jesus himself had shown us. When he came to earth, he only had one mission. To do the will of the Father. And that includes preaching about the kingdom, seeking and saving the lost, even sacrificing his own life out of, out of his great love for his people, for all the people groups of the world. And with the limited time he had, he was faithful in accomplishing that. He made wise use of his time, of his energy. And Jesus fulfilled his mission, which is to do the will of the Father. But that mission is left unfinished and he entrusted to us. Jesus entrusted the work of doing the Father's will to us, which is to preach about the kingdom, to seek and save the lost. And we call this the Great Commission. The Great Commission does not say, go therefore and make so much money. That's not the Great Commission. It does not say, go therefore and make a name for yourself or enjoy life or achieve many things or be the best you can be. It is not those either. It is go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Now I have to mention the differences in those two categories because we always confuse the pursuit of money, the pursuit of health, the pursuit of making a name for ourselves, of enjoying life, being the best, having the best of this life can offer, to be the singular best pursuit that we should have in life. When in fact, it is not. Yes, the Lord has blessed us with so much. So much. Time, abilities, finances, material possessions, health, spiritual gifts, intellect, relationships, opportunities, influence, his word, his wisdom, his peace, his strength, and so much more. But the greatest, the most precious thing that God has blessed us with is a personal relationship with himself through the gospel that we have believed. And we have been blessed with so much and so much more for some of us. We have been blessed with these so that we can use this to fulfill the task that remains unfinished. It is not only for us to enjoy. It is not for us to keep for ourselves. But the Lord bless us, blessed us with these so that we can put them into good use. His purposes his use. And we will only find true satisfaction when we submit ourselves to God's plan and cooperate with Him. The question now is, 
what are we pursuing in life? Are we pursuing what Jesus entrusted to us to accomplish? Are we in our respective fields where we are planted or wherever we may be going? Are we sharing the good news and the love of Jesus Christ to the people that we deal with in those places? Are we letting the light and the life of Jesus shining through our very lives so that when we speak to them in their dark situations, they will find light, they will find hope, and they will find that there is a greater meaning to life other than the lives that they are living right now. That is why teacher Carol went to Nepal because she loves Jesus. That's why the Lord allowed me to go to Taiwan. Because God burdened me to pray for the people groups there. Where has God planted you? In the marketplace? Then be wise and faithful there. Make disciples of and for Jesus. Is God sending you elsewhere from time to time? or maybe on a semi-permanent basis, I pray the same for you, that you would be wise and faithful there. For Jesus has brothers and sisters in those places where you are and where he will send us. People who have yet to hear about the good news of salvation that is found in Jesus alone. And we are the very people whom he will use so that they may hear and be given the opportunity to respond to the good news. And Jesus ex expects us to be faithful. For at the end of each of our lives, we will, we will give an account to God. In closing, let us read the remaining verses of chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these bro my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. So my friends, the question now is, we know that we will give an account one day. We are in the last days. Are we living our lives for the sake of the gospel, for this cause of Christ that he has entrusted to us. When we face him at the judgment seat on the final day, where will we, where, where will we find ourselves? On his right with the sheep who were wise and faithful, or will, will we find ourselves on his left? 
those who are allotted for the goats who are wicked and unfaithful and foolish. It is my prayer that we are secure in Christ. We have received Jesus as personal Lord and Savior. Because if not, terrible will be your experience in the last days that we are in. Because Jesus is coming soon. And because of that, we have to be prepared for his coming by being wise and faithful. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for how you are giving us time to make amends. If we had fallen short in obeying the great commission that Jesus had entrusted to us, we beg your forgiveness. Forgive us for pursuing the temporary things in life, the things that will have no eternal significance or consequences, the things that will even lead us astray, that will distract us from our primary pursuit in life, which is living for you, honoring you, preaching about your love, sharing to others the good news of salvation that is found in Jesus Christ alone and living our lives every day with the joy of that salvation. If we here are not yet sure of our ex eternal security, it is my prayer, Lord, that you will speak to their hearts and show them of their need of Jesus, of his forgiveness, of his grace and mercy, of his love, for he alone can save. For those of us who, who are already in Jesus, help us to press on whatever our circumstances may be, however difficult they may be. Even if we, if we face oppressions, opposition, persecution, help us to press on because our lives are no longer our, our own. We had been bought at a price and it is an honor to live all the days of our lives for Jesus and for His cause. Help us to be wise Help us to be faithful until the end of our lives or until you return for us. Empower us, Lord God. Grant us joy in boldly living out the faith that we have found in you. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
send us out once more into the world. Help us to live according to your ways. Help us to follow you to the very letter so that we may not fail in showing who you are, in displaying your love, your grace, your goodness and greatness through our lives and through the words we speak into their lives. Thank you, Lord God, for this great opportunity to once more live for you, to honor you, to glorify your name through the very lives that you bless us with in each day. And now to you, Lord God, we give, we give praises and honor and glory for you are the one true God whom we exalt in our lives and whom we desire to know more and to make known in the world who needs you. Thank you, Lord, for how you will exalt your name and how you will use us to proclaim you into the world. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen and amen.